fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Away! Boys line up to run a race. Galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios. 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 Good old Cheerios. They got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... He's feeling his Cheerios. Bert Deming, a young rookie in the Texas Rangers, entered the office of his superior officer at headquarters in Austin. You sent for me, Captain? Yes, Deming. Sit down. Thank you, sir. I'm sending you on your first assignment. Oh, yes, sir. It may prove dangerous. Well, I'm ready, sir. A gang of outlaws is operating in the territory near Rockton. The sheriff has requested help. For the present, I'm not going to let him know we're sending help. Oh? In trying to smash this particular gang of crooks, we're going to violate our usual method of procedure. Instead of sending a ranger to take action as usual, I want you to go to Rockton secretly. A sort of undercover man. Pose as a drifter... If possible, get a job at the cafe. Try to get a line on the gang. That's all. Yes, sir. Keep your eyes and ears open. If you do get a line on them, make yourself known to the sheriff. And then move in on the gang. Well, I'll do my best, Captain. Several days later, Bert Deming entered the cafe at Rockton. Something for you, mister? Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to see the boss. Uh, hey, Chuck. Yeah? This hombre wants to see you. All right. What do you want, stranger? Well, you, uh, you own this cafe? That's right. What about it? Well, frankly, I came to ask you for a job. I, I figure on staying in Rockton for a while. Yeah? You're young and healthy? Why not try one of the ranchers? I'm not much on nursing cows, mister. I'd rather work in town. I don't care what I have to do just so as I have a job. Yeah. What's your name? Bert Demi. I'm Chuck Powell. Mm -hmm. I could use another waiter if you want to try for a while. Don't pay much, though. Oh, just so as I get enough for room and board. Tell you what. I'll give you room and board and five bucks a week. Take it or leave it. No, I'll take it. When do I start? Right now. Come on, I'll get your name for Right. <laughs> That night, Chuck Powell and three of his men met in Chuck's office in back of the cafe. I found out the morning stage is bringing in a money shipment for the bank. I want you men to get it. Aren't you going to ride with us, Chuck? Not this time. You men can handle it without me. Now, get this straight. The three of you leave here at dawn. Ride to the valley and wait behind the big boulders. When the stage comes through, plug the guard, then ride out and grab that cash. All right, boss. That's all. Yeah. <coughs> 
I'll be waiting for you when you come back. And be sure to cover your trail. Burke Deming had a room upstairs at the back of the building. At dawn the next morning, he was awakened by the sound of men outside. <sighs> Burke jumped from his cot and looked out the window. He watched as the three men rode away. Later that morning, he was busy in the cafe when the sheriff entered. Men, just got word the morning stage was held up in the valley east of here. There were three masked outlaws. They plugged the guard and got away with 10,000 in cash. You know, 10, now, I'm sure that's the same gang that's been committing other robberies around here. Sometimes they're three, sometimes four men. And I'm forming a posse to try to track them. All those who are willing to ride with me, come on! Right. Later, Bert saw Chuck Powell come from his office with the same three men who had ridden away that morning. They sat at a table and called for drinks. As Bert approached the table with the glasses, he caught part of their conversation. Said you had something else lined up, Chuck. Yeah, tomorrow. Train from the east. I tell you, when. Well, what you standing there for? Put down the drinks and beat it. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, there's something suspicious about that hombre, Chuck. Yeah, he's been staring at us ever since we came out of your office. I know he said, too. You ought to know more about him. Hey, Ollie. Yeah? I'll keep him busy here. You leave in a few minutes. Go to his room. See what you can find. All right, boss. Ollie waited a few minutes, then nonchalantly left to go to Bert's room. A short time later, he returned. Good idea you had, Chuck. Did you find out anything? Plenty. There's a Texas Ranger badge pinned to his shirt at his carpet pack. Yeah? That's interesting. Hey, holy mackerel. He must be here to spy on us. That's right. Only he doesn't know we found out. Ali, did you take the badge? No. Good. No need letting them know we're wise to him till I'm ready to deal with him. What are you going to do, boss? We leave here in the morning. Ride to the cut and hold up the train. And just before we leave, I'll tell him he's riding with us. Hey, are you loco? Yeah, I don't get it. I know what I'm doing. Now, look, he leaves his gun in his room. Ali, you see to it that it's loaded with blanks. Oh, yeah. When we get to the cut, we'll tell him the truth and make him stick with us or else. And as we leave, he'll get a bullet. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode a trail through the nearby hills. As they topped a rise, they saw a group of horsemen rounding a turn ahead of them. Look, Kimosabe. Many riders coming. I think it's a posse, Toto. Head for the trees before they see us in a hurry. Come to the scout. Just as the masked man and Indian reached the trees, the sheriff and the posse spotted them. The Lone Ranger and Toto rode at top speed for some distance. They covered their trail in shallow streams and on hard ground until they were certain they were no longer followed. It was dusk when the masked man and Indian reached a grove on the edge of town. The Lone Ranger waited while Toto went for news. Soon, Toto returned. Oh, scout. Oh, fella. Easy, scout. Easy, fella. What did you find out, Toto? Well, three outlaws hold up morning stage and get plenty cash. Me hear men who rode in posse say, then follow one outlaw to Rocky Canyon. Then loose trail. The outlaws separated after the robbery? Ah, Then we'll all cover tracks. Plenty good. It's too dark to pick up a trail now. We start at dawn and go to Rocky Canyon. All right, let's go to camp. Easy, 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 the following morning, dawn was breaking when the Lone Ranger and Tonto left camp and rode to Rocky Canyon. Easy, 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 easy. Toto rode a short distance away from the masked man as they looked for tracks. The Lone Ranger turned silver toward a long line of brush bordering a wooded grove. Easy, big fella, easy. Oh, oh, oh steady, silver. Easy, steady, big fella. Oh, that brush hides a narrow gully. Hello, come here. Come, 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 come on. You find something? Look, tracks of one horse in the gully. Ah, tracks of outlaw, maybe. Yes. We'll follow them from here. He's steady, he's steady, Scout, you see, fella. Come on, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, fella. The cut 
curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scene, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Fights hard and fair, so in the ring, you kids beware. He's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats, and every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The trail the Lone Ranger and Toto followed was clear and led to a thick grove of trees a short distance behind the cafe. <laughs> Someone left his horse here and walked toward the back door of the cafe. Ah. I wonder if that door opens directly into the cafe. Well, I do not know. Let me go find out. All right, Toto. I'll wait here for you. Ah. Toto cautiously approached the rear of the cafe. As he crouched to pass under a partly open window, he heard voices inside. Seven, Ken and I are going on a little business trip. I want you to ride with us. Get your gun belt, then go saddle your horse. We'll be leaving in about ten minutes. Bring your horse to the back door. Mm. Just as you say. Toto cautiously looked through the office window, then he moved around the corner of the building and stood waiting. Meanwhile, Bert Deming went up to his room over the cafe to get his gun belt. The rays of the early sun slanted between the buildings, and Bert, glancing through the window, noticed the shadow of a figure outlined below. He leaned out the open window and looked down. He saw Toto crouched near the corner of the building and peering around it toward the back door. Uh, an I don't like the way he's acting. I'll get on and find out why he's there. Bert went downstairs and, without saying anything to Chuck, stepped out the back door. With a drawn gun, he cautiously moved toward the corner of the building and suddenly sprang around the corner. I beat you. I you saw you from the side window. I don't know what you're doing here, but I'll find out. First, I'll take your guns. Tonto, in a lightning move, dropped his hands, grabbing Bert's gun arm. Let me check your gun. Hey, let go. Tell me you have gun. Do not move. It was fast action, engine. What are you going to do? Now you stand back. You take bullets from gun. Uh, I'll throw gun at the bushes. <laughs> You'll not hurt anyone with blank cartridges. What? You say there was a blank? You look. <laughs> so that's it. Engine, you just put me wise to something. What are you going to do now? Maybe we go talk to Sheriff. No, wait, wait. You think I'm a crook, is that it? Maybe. If I prove I'm not, will you promise not to tell anyone about me? Prove you're not crook. Me not make trouble. All right, look at this. Oh. That badge of Texas Ranger. That's right. I'm trying to get some on a certain gang. Remember, say nothing to anyone. They're going on a job of some kind. I'm riding with them. That's plenty risky. I know, I know, but I must do it. You better leave now. Any of the men see you hanging around, they might give you trouble. Toto quickly went back to the grove and told the Lone Ranger what he had overheard and what had happened. Soon, three riders leading two other horses stopped at the back door of the cafe. Chuck and Bert came from the office and mounted. Then the five men rode away. Owner of cafe and young fellow me here talking in office, riding with others. We'll follow those men and find out just what this is all about. He's just a big old house. He's here for that. Come on, Silver. Let's go. The five men rode in the silence until they reached a cut with sloping sides through which the railroad tracks ran. 
I pulled to a stop among the trees halfway down one slope. Oh, 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 oh boy. What are we stopping here for? Well, <laughs> you might as well know, Denny. We're going to put some logs across those tracks down there to stop the morning train. You mean you plan to rob the train? That's right. And you're going to help us. Any objections? Bert thought fast. He realized it would be best to play along with the crooks until he had a chance to do something. He shrugged his shoulders and answered, What made you think I'd have any objections, Mr. Powell? Glad to see you take it that way. Reckon I can trust you to let you keep your gun. Thanks. Now dismount, men. Get some logs on the tracks. And train is due in a short time. All right, Charlie. Hey, Bert walked to the foot of the slope with the others. When Tonto had shown him there were blank cartridges in his gun, which he had reloaded with live ammunition, Bert realized that the gang intended to kill him. As they put the logs across the tracks, he noticed that Chuck watched him closely. After the blockade was set, the outlaws and Bert moved behind some large boulders. Now we'll wait here till the train enters the cut and stops. Then we'll run out shooting. The Lone Ranger and Tonto had stopped just over the top of the slope among the trees. They moved on foot so that they could look down without being seen. There are the horses in that wooded grove. Ah. And them have logs across tracks, Kimasabi. That's a gang we've come to find, Tonto. They intend to stop and rob the morning train. Ah. Me see him waiting. This side a big boulder, foot of slope. Tonto, the tracks curve into that cut. The engineer can't see those heavy logs in time to stop the train. The train be wrecked if it hit logs. Yes, and if we try to flag it, they may not stop. And what we do? We get to the horses quickly. Come on. Ah. We must try to capture those men and remove the logs before the train comes along. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. Easy, sir. bottom of the slope, Bert also suddenly realized what the masked man had pointed out to Tonto, that the train wouldn't be able to stop in time to avoid the logs. Hey, I just realized the train will be wrecked. All right, beach all of you. <laughs> Look, he drew his gun. That's real tough, don't it? Tin Star, you're getting on my nerves. I aim to let you live till after the robbery, but this changes things. Let him have it, Ollie. His gun's loaded with blanks. I'll shut him up. No! Holy smoke, look. A masked man in an engine. Take cover, quick. The sudden and unexpected approach of the Lone Ranger and Tonto momentarily turned the attention of the crooks from Bert Deming, who sprang behind the boulders. As the others started to follow, they faced Bert's gun. All right, stay where you are. I don't mind him. The gun's loaded with blanks. I'll get rid of all this. Oi! We're caught in the open. Use your gun. The outlaws were between Bert's gunfire and that of the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Realizing they had no chance when the masked man and Indian pulled to a stop, the crooks dropped their guns. Who's, 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 he's tied them, Toto, quickly. Uh, I'm keeping covered, Indian. Uh, I don't know who you two men are, but you came just at the right time. We saw what was happening. I'll go and start moving those logs. Hurry so that you can help me. Follow me, sir. While Toto and Bert hurriedly tied the crooks, the Lone Ranger worked frantically to remove the barricade of heavy logs. <laughs> Soon he was joined by Toto and Bert, and the three men managed to get most of the logs removed when they heard the whistle of the approaching train. Let me help with this log. Two more. Take the smaller one. Uh, oh, five and put that last heavy one on the tracks. I should have stopped them then. They would have killed you. We must get this big one off in time. Please, Silver. <laughs> Hastily, the Lone Ranger grabbed his lariat. He fastened one end of it securely to the log with a timber hitch, the other to the pommel of his saddle. On Silver, on Big Pull! Pull, Silver, pull! The big stallion exerted every ounce of strength as he pulled the big log slowly from the rails. The Lone Ranger hoped fervently that the lariat wouldn't break. Just as the log pulled clear... Easy, big fella. Steady, boy. Steady. That was close. We just made it in time. Uh, look. Riders coming. But the sheriff and the posse. Maybe you better leave, mister. It's I don't... all right. 
Please, get out of here. Hey, I must have tried to wreck the train. Look at all the laws. The outlaws you wander over near those boulders, Sheriff. You'll find them tied and ready to take to jail. But this mask, Umbra. Uh, perhaps this will explain. Uh, to whom it may concern. The masked man carrying this note is to be given every consideration by all legal authorities. He is a loyal American and a fine, law-abiding citizen. It's signed by the governor. Hey, governor. Say, now I know you. Here's the note. Oh, thanks. As for you, young fellow. Well, this badge will identify me, Sheriff. I'm Bert Deming of the Texas Rangers. Holy smoke. Let's get over and see those crooks you fellas caught. Come on, yes, yes. There they are. Oh, 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 oh. Look! Chuck Powell and three of his men. That's the gang you've been hunting, Sheriff. Yeah. I think Bert has enough evidence against them. I sure have, mister. The new bill stolen from the stage yesterday must be in Powell's office. That'll clinch the case against him. Stage guard died. They'll be held for murder. No, no. Ollie shot the guard. He's the one. Shut up, you crazy galoot. <laughs> Talking themselves right into the noose. Bert, you did a very brave thing joining that gang to get evidence against them. Oh, if it hadn't been for you and the engine, they would have killed me. Then they'd erect and rob the tree. Bert, you're a credit to the Texas Rangers. Well, thanks, mister. Sheriff, sure, you have enough men to handle the crooks. My friend and I will leave now. We're heading for Pecos. We'll see you again sometime. Adios, everyone. 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 I heard what was in that note, but it didn't say who that man is. Do you know? Yeah. As soon as I read that note, it came to me. You see, he's none other than the Lone Ranger. Cause champions are made, not fought. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It helps a guy feel confident just knowing that champions are made, not born. Otto Graham, famed quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, made himself a champ. Listen, young Otto on his way to fame found football was no sissy game. Took power and speed and head work, too. And Graham learned, as champions do, that Wheaties help a guy come through. Now Otto passes for that score and still eats Wheaties even more. Otto Graham's been calling the right breakfast signal for 23 years. A big bowl of Wheaties. He-Man breakfast? There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Touchdown, Otto. Let's go, boy. Hey, hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen. This recorded program has come to you from Detroit. This is ABC Radio Network.